Hey, this is Jimmy Archer with Dirt Tri Magazine and yet another one of our Dirt Tri video reviews of product. Today we're coming at you from South Denver Hildebrand Ranch, which I believe is in Littleton, Colorado, officially. Basically, we're here because the open water swim lake is right over there and we just got out. So we're going to be reviewing the Ultra King Mountain 1.5 uh, trail running shoe for you today. And this is a lightweight, you could probably call it a racer if you're talking about mountain running. Um, for off-road triathlon, I think you could probably race in it, but you'll want to wear socks and I'll get to that in just a second. Um, basically, this, this shoe is Ultra's kind of lightweight trail runner. It's named after King Mountain, which is one of the kind of gnarliest peaks there is in, uh, in Utah, which is Ultra's home state. Um, it is. It has all your standard ultra accoutrement, which would be zero drop midsole, their um, foot shape upper, so it's a little bit spacier, spacier, more spacious in the toe box, but it's a little bit narrower and, and uh, fits uh, the heel a little bit more snug. This shoe will just continue from from. Let's go. Let's go bottom to top. I was going to start from the top to the bottom, but let's go to the bottom to bottom bottom and top. It's a little bit more aggressive outsole for looser um, looser conditions. Maybe muddy. I actually ran it in the mud and the snow. It sheds mud pretty well, but the lugs, the shape of the lugs could be a little bit better if you're doing hardcore like mud running, fell running in England or something like that, but it's not bad. It's the Mega Grip Vibram compound. So it's pretty soft, pretty grippy. It's not as soft as some of their compounds, but it's it's pretty soft. It works well in crushed granite like we have here. It also works well on rocks um, to actually grip with the with the softness of it. But the lugs are um, six millimeter, so pretty deep, not horrendously deep. But if you wore it on a road, you'd probably notice the lugs. Um, from there, it has the a stone guard kind of a carbon looking stone guard that's more a midsole thing kind of goes up into the up into the the forefoot but where my foot flexes it's not quite there so if I was running really really gnarly rocky trails which I did take it on some you can feel some of those rocks it's not like it's gonna hurt your foot but it's not a full-on stone guard that's absolutely bulletproof which there's pros and cons to that as well but the your rock guard is primarily here um, and that part is great, didn't notice anything. It's a fairly narrow or fairly thin um, midsole, so uh, Ultra calls it lightweight midsole. It's the Ultra Ego um, foam, which is a fairly soft durometer. So being narrower and fairly soft, um, there's not a whole lot of, quote, protection, but obviously it's lighter weight. So kind of pick your battles. Um, Going from there, you've got an upper that is a ripstop with kind of an integrated, I don't know if you can see it, but integrated um, bonded material that gives it a little bit more durability and a little bit more control laterally. Um, there's not a actual heel counter that you might find um, on some shoes. So your control and stability on the descent comes more from the like arch strap, which is an actual functional arch strap unlike some that are just like a piece of velcro but you can see in here it actually goes all the way through the shoe so when you cinch this thing down which I have you'll really feel it and you are locked into the shoe even on the rockiest gnarliest stuff um, from there you've got the, the gator trap so you can put your gator on here gator trap there which is an ultra um, proprietary thing if you like gators um, and then it's got a kind of a sock liner style. If you can't see it here, we'll show you a picture. Um, tongue, so the tongue doesn't really, it doesn't slide down and it's actually, it's pretty, uh, pretty comfortable. Um, and then it's got the foot lock material, which you might not be able to see on video, but if you can, if you can hear that, it's, it's, it's like a cat's tongue is what it is. It's smooth in one direction and it's really grippy in the other way. And that's why I said if you're thinking about using these for 
a triathlon, they're definitely light enough. They're definitely racy enough, especially for, for more technical running courses. But that footlock, I don't know if you'd want to use it barefoot. And I haven't tried it yet because it just feels a little rougher than I would want to use. But you might want to use socks. And a lot of Xterra racers use socks anyway, so maybe this is an Xterra shoe. The other thing that makes it a little bit tricky for triathlon is that you do have this Velcro strap, which in a way means that you could run elastic laces and keep them a little bit looser to get your foot in. And then you'd have the, the Velcro strap, which would give you your attention. Um, I mentioned lightweight a couple of times. I believe Ultra's uh, weight basis is off of a size 10 in men and women. And the size 10s, I think, for men it's 8.5 ounces and for women it's 7. So it's a pretty light shoe. It's not like a 5 ounce you know, road racing shoe that's going to break down in more than a 10K. These are going to be a little bit more durable than that. But it is kind of a race shoe, so it's not going to have the durability of, of a much thicker midsole. Um, comes in three colors for men, three colors for women, and uh, retails for uh, 140. And yeah, I mean, other than that, my opinions on it, I have to admit that I was a little bit skeptical. I've not used a lot of ultras about the foot shape. I've got a really narrow foot, so I thought I was gonna be really splashy in them, and I have to tell you, I really liked it. I'm kind of an ultra convert now. Um, I liked having a little bit more toe box and then having the midsole strap. I got all the control I needed and like I said, I, I ran about as technical trails as you can get, at least here in Colorado, which is probably about as technical as you can get. Um, only thing I would maybe change a little is the tongue for me slides down just a little bit and just kind of hits me in a weird place. but. That's the thing about reviewing shoes is my foot isn't your foot, isn't the next person's foot. So some people might love this tongue. I might want it to be a little bit longer. You know, that's the only thing I could really pick apart with this. Other than I've run in them quite a bit. I'd say probably not quite 500 miles. And I'm starting to notice a little bit of midsole fatigue. I wouldn't say they're breaking down. I wouldn't say they're worn out but they're definitely broken in, let's say that. But you can see that the outsole is pretty much out of the box brand new. So the durability outsole wise is awesome, um, but just a narrow midsole. I mean, you get what, you're, what you get, right? This is, this is more of a race issue that has a more narrow midsole. So anyway, that's the Ultra uh, King Mountain 1.5 or King MT, MT, I'll call it King Mountain 1.5. Um, I'd give it an overall thumbs up. Um, for a little bit more feedback on that, maybe a star rating, check dirttry.com. Also, be sure to follow us on all our social media. We're on Twitter at, at dirttrymag. We're on Facebook at dirttrymagazine. We're on Instagram, dirttrymag again. And then, uh, yeah, be sure to click subscribe, please, to this video. It helps us to get a little more traction, and then we can get a little bit more product to review. Um, and feel free to comment below on what you think if you've tried this shoe or if you have any questions you want us to address. Until then, this is Jimmy Archer signing off from Dirt Drive. <laughs>